A record-breaking weather pattern will be impacting the United States over the next few days, which is about to bring the coldest weather of the season, including record-breaking low and high temperatures across much of the United States. Additionally, we are expecting a major flooding threat to evolve over the next few days in areas like Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Lastly, we are continuing to keep an eye on the tropics as there is Invest 99L approaching the Lesser Antilles this morning. That could make its way into the Caribbean Sea, and if something's able to develop in the long term, that could end up being a threat to land. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country right now and back over in the four corner states. That is where we currently have a high pressure system sitting just to the south of the four corners. And that's actually allowing for a lot of moisture to currently circle around this high pressure system into areas like the four corner states and actually making its way into Texas, Oklahoma and Kansas. This is going to allow for the potential for a lot of rainfall over the next few days, especially in Oklahoma, where a widespread four to seven inches of rain is currently in the forecast. Additionally, back along the East Coast, we've actually had some scattered showers and storms over the last 24 hours, stretching from New England all the way back into the Gulf. There was actually a couple of tornado warnings yesterday over near Syracuse, New York. Additionally, an 80 mile per hour severe thunderstorm warning actually happened. Behind that, though, is a very strong cold front, which is about to bring the coldest weather that we've seen all summer long for much of the United States. Now, the biggest story this week is the cold weather that will be impacting the United States. And one of the biggest reasons why is because our mid-level flow in our jet stream is currently coming out of the northwest with a large trough sitting back over in Canada. This northwesterly flow that is currently in place in our mid and upper levels is actually allowing for much colder weather to currently come out of Canada. Now, on the other side of things, we also have a high pressure system that is sitting back over in the four corner states, as we just alluded to, and all of the moisture moisture spinning around that is leading to a potential major flooding threat over the next few days, including areas like Oklahoma. Now, this is going to cool things down, but it's also going to make it so that we have the potential for flooding rainfall. So a lot of negatives, but also a lot of positives as we are in the later half of August here and the temperatures are going to be at the coldest points that we've seen in several months for much of the country. As we go into the middle and end of this week, our jet stream will continue to come out of the north across the Ohio Valley, northeast and even back over into Florida, which is going to continue to allow for that cold air to drop out of Canada and move across much of the United States. However, as we go into next weekend, we are going to start to see a more zonal jet stream across the board, which basically means we have very flat and you know, westerly flow here, which is not going to allow for much of any change in our temperatures. They'll basically be around average for most of the country by the weekend. And then by the time we go into the first week of September, I do think we are going to start to see the return of severe weather. And on top of that, I also think warmer weather is going to make a big return. Now let's talk more about exactly how cold it is going to get over the next few days and why this is going to be a record-breaking weather pattern. Beginning with our temperature anomalies, which is basically the difference from average over the next few days. This is beginning with today. We have very cold air currently sitting across the Great Lakes and back into the Central Plains for this time of the year. Very strong northerly winds, too, are kind of making it feel even colder than it actually is outside as well. As we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, that cold air will make it all the way down into Florida and even into Texas. So expect temperatures to drop at least a few degrees over the next few days. By Thursday and Friday, that cold air is going to continue basically all across the Great Plains and back into the Northeast. A secondary shot of cold air is likely if you're back over New England. Even parts of New York and Pennsylvania will feel that on Thursday and Friday. And then as we go into the weekend, that cold weather continues across the Great Plains and along the East Coast until we start to see a trough make its way back out of Canada again. And a strong southerly wind should take place during the first week of September, which could also lead to the return of severe weather. But again, that is a little bit far out from now, but I do think we're going to see some severe weather make it a return as we go into the first week of September. And more likely than not, if that does occur, it'll happen across the central and northern plains, Midwest, and parts of the Ohio Valley. Now, this is exactly how cold it is going to get over the next few days, beginning with our high temperatures for today. And look at this, back over in the central plains, many areas will barely get out of the 60s, mainly because of all the rain that is going to be falling. Back over in the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, beautiful weather in store today, high temperatures in the 60s, but back over along the Gulf Coast and in Texas, Texas, many areas in the 90s and 100s. Tuesday morning, looking pretty cold, especially in the Midwest. We're talking about 40s and 50s for lows. There could be a few areas in the upper 30s, which may lead to some spotty areas of frost. Uh, Tuesday afternoon looks beautiful as well. High temperatures in the 50s, 60s, and 70s all across the Northeast and the Appalachian Mountains. This will be one of the coldest mornings of the entire week. Wednesday morning, we could have some areas actually dive into the upper 30s as well, back over in Pennsylvania and New York, including even northern New England. So again, frost cannot be 
ruled out in some spotty locations. Wednesday and Thursday, again, the temperatures look phenomenal. The weather pattern is going to remain the same. Again, colder weather dominating for much of the country throughout the rest of August. And then as we go into early September, we will start to see the heat return to areas like the Great Plains back into the 80s and even some 90s. And in case you're wondering who's going to have record-breaking cold here at the very tail end of August, this is Tuesday morning's low temperatures. Any numbers that are on the map here do indicate temperatures that are going to be at or below our records for the morning hours. So we're talking about temperatures in the 50s and 40s, even possibly 32 degrees in northern Minnesota. Wednesday morning is basically the same story. We are going to have more record-breaking low temperatures for the daily records on the 27th, anywhere from Toledo, Ohio, all the way back over into central Alabama. Thursday is the same story, even further down to the south and east as well. And on Tuesday as well, so tomorrow, we are talking about the potential for record-breaking low high temperatures. That includes areas in north Texas, all the way back over into western New York. Many areas are going to be breaking records here over the next few days. And the Climate Prediction Center does agree that we are going to continue to see below average temperatures even into the first few days of September. This is any time from August 30th until September 3rd. Below average temperatures are likely across the central plains, the mid-Atlantic, all along the east coast as well. Again, enjoy the beautiful weather. This is some of the best weather that we've had for a tail end of August in literally years. I don't remember a time where we had below average temperatures this late into the summer, especially this early as well. This is one of the stronger cold fronts that we've had for late August in quite some time. Now, unfortunately, we are expecting a lot of rain over the next couple of days in areas like Oklahoma and Arkansas. This is what it looks like today. Unfortunately, a lot of rain is going to fall. Not really much in the way of severe weather out of this particular event, but definitely be ready for localized areas of upwards of five to eight inches of rain just over the next 24 to 48 hours, especially across central Oklahoma. This is the current thinking in terms of the total rainfall accumulation we can expect today and tomorrow. A widespread area of two to three inches of rainfall is expected just to the west there of Wichita, Kansas, through Oklahoma City and also towards Fort Smith, Arkansas. But unfortunately, the long term picture does not show this ending anytime soon. Obviously, the drought situations can be helped, but we could also see the potential for some major flooding so be ready for that we are anticipating that there will be a widespread area within the next seven days that picks up as much as five to seven inches of rainfall localized amounts could be as high as 10 to 12 inches out of this particular event back over near fort smith arkansas fayetteville and also back over near tulsa now for the long-term picture across the united states high pressure will be building by the middle of this week across the ohio valley and basically up and down the east coast so things will dry out a little bit for most of the eastern tier of the country by the time we go into the tail end of the weekend into early next week. Showers and storms should pick up again across the Ohio Valley and back through the southeast. Not expecting a whole lot in the way of severe weather here as we go into the first day or two of September, but I do think it will make a return as we get closer to September 3rd through 7th. This is the region I'll be keeping an eye on, basically anywhere in the Great Plains and also back into the Midwest. We could see the return of some severe weather. What that exactly entails is uncertain. We don't typically see that many big and favorable tornado setups this time of the year. However, I would not rule out something happening next week when it comes to the threat of tornadoes tornadoes and then beyond this things become a lot more uncertain but again we are getting awfully close to September which is going to be the beginning of meteorological fall here in just a few days so colder weather and even some snow will be on the horizon here relatively soon and the tropics are still active in the Atlantic Ocean as we start to approach the peak of hurricane season tropical storm Fernand did form just east of Bermuda it is not forecasted to become a hurricane but it is moving off to the north it is not going towards the United States so no concerns here for land however back over in the lesser Antilles, we do have Invest 99L. It does not have a very high chance of forming right now, mainly because of the hostile environment it is currently going through. There is a lot of wind shear, also not overly you know favorable when it comes to deep convection. We've only had a few bursts of that. It's been pretty dry for the most part. However, over the next few days, it will be continuing to track to the west, and if for some reason it can maintain its structure, there is an off chance that this could take a turn to the north and into the Gulf and maybe come something in the long term. I think the odds of this happening are awfully low, but it is not something that can be entirely ruled out. Now, when we look at the spaghetti charts, which basically indicates all the different potential scenarios that could happen with Invest 99L, the majority of them do not have this forming into basically anything. It goes into the Caribbean and basically crashes into Central America as a very weak disturbance with just some showers and storms. However, there are a couple of outliers that do bring this up into the Gulf, and if this were to make it into the Gulf, there is a chance that we could see some sort of tropical disturbance form here. Now, this is still something that is at least five days from now, so I'm not concerned about this as of right now. However, if anything does trend in the wrong direction, we will definitely be the first to let you know, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe
subscribe down below. There will likely be no video tomorrow. Our next forecast will either be on Wednesday or Thursday, talking more about the upcoming other weather pattern change that will be happening as we go into early September. And on top of that, the likelihood of severe weather returning does appear to be somewhat high right now as we go into the first week of September. So we'll have much more details on that in our next forecast. So make sure to stay tuned and we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast.